Hi everyone! Welcome to the first video as part of the Stormwater Education Methods course. Today we will be demonstrating the activity Watershed in a Box. It is a fun and interactive way for students to understand how water moves throughout a watershed. To begin, you will need these materials. A baking pan or shallow box, 12 by 12 inches or larger, newspaper or easel paper, several sheets for each student or group creating the model, aluminum foil, spray bottles, powders of different colors, and permanent markers. What is a watershed? As we begin by crumpling the paper to create the base for our landscape, ask students what they think a watershed is. A watershed is the area of land that drains to a single body of water like a stream, river, or lake. As you're making your model, make sure to place higher points along the edges of the box. After the paper has been crumpled up and placed inside the box, take a sheet of aluminum foil and lay it down over the top, shiny side up. Push the edges of the foil along the walls of the box and fold the foil over the edge. Be careful as you're doing this not to tear the foil. Another question to ask students as this activity is happening is who lives in a watershed? Hopefully, as they create their own landscapes, they'll be able to recognize their home and understand that they do. It doesn't matter exactly where you live, because watersheds range in size from very small to very large. For instance, small ponds have watersheds, but so does Lake Champlain. Once the landscape has been created, use a permanent marker. We recommend you use Sharpies to draw on the foil, marking streams and rivers that flow from areas of high elevation in the watershed to areas of lower elevation. As students create the landscape, have them think of all the different parts that make up a landscape, including houses, roads, farms, fields, feedlots, stores, or anything else that they can imagine. Next, you can begin to decorate with different substances, which can both be natural and man-made that exists in a landscape. Sprinkle a little bit of different colors of powdered drink mix onto the watershed model. Colors can represent different kinds of pollution. For example, red powder can represent yard care chemicals and you can sprinkle it around the houses. Green powder can represent salt on the roads or automobile waste and it can be sprinkled along roadways and parking lots. Brown powder can represent exposed soil at a farm field or a construction site. And blue powder can represent human or animal waste and you could leave little piles near homes and farms. Do what works best for you with the materials that you have. For instance, in this case we used brown sprinkles as animal waste rather than the blue powder. Feel free to use sauces or sprinkles for different textures as we did in the video, but make sure that any sweet treats are closely monitored when students are doing the activity.
This is where the spray bottles come in. Spray your landscape liberally, especially if you are using sprinkles or other materials heavier than powder. You can see how the water flows over the landscape. Once it has rained, think through the following questions. What happened? What types of water pollution exists in your watershed? How would you re redesign what happens on the land in the watershed to prevent water pollution? You can see from the remains of the rainstorm why we would recommend Sharpies over other permanent markers. They won't wash away. When you have finished the first round of the project, dump the water from the model into a bucket or sink. Remove the foil from the model and set it aside. Place a new piece of foil on the watershed and draw a new community. This time, redesign the land use in your community to prevent water pollution. Brainstorm what this might look like. Will it be gullies or stormwater ponds? Sprinkle powdered drink mix or other decorations in the appropriate areas in the watershed using the same colors you used before. And make it rain again with a spray bottle. Think about, was there an improvement in the amount of water pollution you observed? Why or why not? Thank you for your time. We hope you and your students enjoy the project.